My guest today is running against Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. The notorious AOC represents New York's 14th district, where she's been promoting her socialist agenda ever since she was elected. My guest today hopes to stop AOC in her tracks by mounting a campaign to unseat her. I'm happy to welcome New York congressional candidate Tina Forte. Where do you meet this lady? Hey, Tina. Hi, Dick. How are you? Good. I just introduced you as the Bronx equivalent of Sarah Palin. <laughs> oh, thank you. You know, um, uh, AOC is looking for a safe district to run in, and she thought the Brooklyn Queens district would be safer, but I think she'll have to look all the way to Havana to find a safe district. Yeah, she used the district. She definitely used District 14 to push her agenda. Yeah. She's not in the district. She's never in the district. She does not help anyone in the district. She's missing. She's literally missing from the district. She's yep. worried about everything else and herself. That's all she's worried about. She regards the district as a distant memory. In fact, sometimes I think mm -hmm. the people that live there might read all the press coverage about her and all the TV glitter and all the Hollywood promo and say, remember us, we live here and you promised to give us cops and you've taken them away? Yes, yes she did. She took Amazon jobs away, she took the cops away. She doesn't fight for the people. Where is she with the upzoning that's going on that we're fighting in the Bronx right now, the upzoning at Food Town? She is not in the district, she is totally disappeared. She used District 14 to push her radical socialist agenda. And she really represents sort of an at-large national constituency of leftist billionaires. Uh, those yes. are her clients. Those are her constituents, really. Right. And then she became one of them. She became an elite, just like one of them. That, yep. That's what District 14 did for her. She did nothing for District 14. But now she's an elite, just like one of her many supporters and followers. Do you think that, I speculate in the monologue I just did, that I think she could be inflicted upon us as a Democratic candidate for president? And I'm appealing to my viewers to help you stop her before she goes that far, to kill her oh, before yes. she multiplies. I, I can see her doing that. I can see her doing that. She is, she very, I could very well see her running for president. You know, uh, the other day in Michigan, uh, the governor, veto Governor Whitmer, a, Repub a Democrat, vetoed a bill the Republicans passed, increasing aid to adoption and increasing aid to pregnancy crisis centers, because they, she claims they encourage opposition to abortion. And I think that with candidates Terrible. like AOC, I think that we're stripping them of this pro-choice veneer and then underneath, we're finding they're not pro-choice, they're pro-abortion. Yes, they are. That's exactly what they are. Listen, I adopted my granddaughter. I legally adopted my own granddaughter. My son was 20 years old. The mom just, you know, she was young. She didn't want to have the baby. So I adopted my granddaughter, and I think there should be more adoptions. We should be funding people that want to adopt babies and save these babies. I'm pro-life. Okay, and AOC wants to go and she wants to protest in front of the Supreme Court. Well, why isn't she at the border? Why isn't she at the border where women are literally being sold? Yep, AOC had trade? quite... Why isn't she there? Where's the feminist for that? AOC had quite an adventure at the board, at the Supreme Court. We'll show you the video. She uh, demonstrated outside the court and then she, she was arrested, she was detained. You'll see the video there. Notice the red circle. Yeah, she pretended, her hands behind yeah, she, her there's back. No hand, there's no handcuffs on She pretended on she her. had handcuffs on. And uh, she I didn't know, have just handcuffs. Like when she's at the border like this. And look at how she show. Look at how she strolls nonchalantly. Look at my hands. Look at behind my back and see how I suffer for the cause. A total phony, a total fake. Yeah, just she like is. she she's is. She's a hypocrite and a phony. Yeah. yeah. That's exactly what she is. Absolutely. And we do not need that. How yep. a country needs change. My district needs change. I was born and raised in the district. I got married in the district. I have a business in the district. I am literally a Bronx girl through and through. She is not part of the district. She doesn't even know, like you said, she couldn't find the district with a map. Yep. 
or like I said, she confuse it with the district she cares about, the District of Columbia, <laughs> where <Yes>. she lives. <laughs> yeah. Yes, exactly. So tell me a little bit about how you see your ability to go into a district that's largely Democrat and largely Hispanic and be able to win. I can do it by what I've been doing. I have a ground game, complete ground game. I'm going door to door. I meet and speak with constituents. I actually help them now. There was a big noise issue that was going on, and I had met somebody in College Point through my petitioning process. Was the noise issue AOC process. speaking on the soundtrack? <laughs> <laughs> that could have been right. I know she drives around doing that. Yep. But actually, there was an issue, and while I was going around petitioning, someone asked me to help with a noise issue, and I did help. And they are actually confiscating speakers right now because I reached out to police stations and explained the noise issue that was going on in the district. They have no one to call. The constituents have no one to call. And while I'm out there, like I said, I'm out there was petitioning just to get onto the primary ballot, and I was helping people while I was doing that process. You know, uh, people talk about AOC as a socialist leftist figure. But I believe that the way for you to win is to run against her as a detached figure, as someone who has forgotten her district, subordinated its needs to the needs of ideology and politics and her own ambition. And that somebody ought to wake her up and tell her there's a district out there that needs you. Yeah, she abandoned them. Did she, she abandoned ever come? the district. She abandoned the people. No, she rarely ever comes to the district. Very rarely. She's never there. She's and on Instagram making makeup tutorials, or she's running around the country for these causes, you know, just to get some TV air. Um, yep. She goes to galas. She does the complete opposite of what she was put in to do. She really let down. I feel she let down the voters, the ones that voted her in. They they all should be voting against her. They shouldn't be voting for her. She let them down. Do you see evidence of a shift among Latinas and Latinos against the yes, Democratic Party? Yeah, tell us about yes, it. Yes, I do. Yes, I speak I speak to them. A lot of them are business owners. They are very upset. They're actually even upset with what's going on with the police. You think that because they're Latinos that they just want to vote for AOC because they're Democrats. That's not true. They love our country. A lot of them escaped here from communism. They don't want it here. They see that. They don't want that. I speak to a lot of them. They have a daily experience with this process of seduction away from democracy that's now going on. And I think they're determined to halt it. Yes, they want. They don't. They do not want it. They don't. And for some reason, AOC feels that the American people and that the district wants it. And it's the complete opposite. We have a lot of people that are in my district that are actually legal immigrants that came here to run away from the Castros and the Maduros. And she's here and she does never even says anything opposite of them. She actually supports them. And the Latinos do not support them. They ran from these regimes. They don't want it here. They don't want it in the district. They don't want it in the country. Yep. She's detached. Like you said, she's detached from that. Yep. You ought to give her a map so she can find the district. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's right. I might nail her one. <laughs> now, you mentioned <laughs> a zoning issue. You mentioned a zoning yes. issue. Tell us about that. Yes. There's an upzoning issue in District 14 right now, right on the outside of Country Club and Throg's Deck at a food town. They want to knock down the food town that's been there for so many years, and they want to make up welfare housing, Section 8 housing. And, and it will overrun the schools. Are there other it's supermarkets? Not built for that. Yes, it's a supermarket. Are there other ones people can shop at? Not Once very many. Once they knock many, down food town, where many. do they go? Uh, they would have to go to Buena Vista, which is underneath Westchester Square. They would have to go to East Tremont Avenue, which a couple of supermarkets have closed down. And yep. so it's it's just, it's, it will ruin the, the infrastructure isn't made for it. Two. It'll overwhelm the schools. You got to remember kindergarten right now is already being taught in trailers because there's not enough room in the public schools. So if I you just, knock down the supermarket and you put the housing in, it's, it's going to overwhelm the community. We're running out of time. I just want to make this point to, my, to our viewers. 
it is this kind of granular local politics, this kind of local dig down deep issue that can defeat AOC. Well, good luck, uh, Tina. Thank you. Uh, get, electing Tina Forte and replacing AOC is like nabbing Fidel Castro while he's still in the mountains before he has a chance to take over a country.